So welcome to the show. It's our 91st episode of the National Conversation on Energy Efficiency. Well, over the last uh, few weeks, we've had a theme of looking at these uh, wind turbine uh, farms that have been going up around the region. Last week, we met the guys from the JBay Wind Farm and also Synergy a few weeks ago. And then, of course, the ETA Awards, just to remind you that uh, the ETA Awards have closed now. Um, that's uh, ESCOM's Energy Efficiency Awards. And um, those deadlines have not been extended, so they've got uh, quite a, a long list of entries there. So well done to all of those of you who did get your entry forms in. Well, today we're talking very local. We've got uh, the guys from Kestrel Wind from joining us, and Alex uh, joins us. So you're actually heading up the marketing side of Na- Kestrel. National Sales Manager. National Sales Manager. Well, mm. it's wonderful to have you in studio with us. Nice. I believe things are going really well. Very well, yeah. No, we are... Gearing up for, for an increase in, in various sort of fields of our business. Um, we, as you said, manufacture wind turbines here in P. We, we are a subsidiary of Everready, so small wind turbines, not the big ones that uh, the guys yes. in JB are putting up. We do the sort of smaller scale, up to 3.5 kilowatts in size, so a 4-meter blade diameter. Um, that's going really well, so we export a lot of that. Our biggest turbine is um, certified in the U.S. and the U.K., so, you know, obviously export is a big business for us there. And then, and then locally we supply a lot of off-grid wind turbines for systems with battery backup and so forth. And then... Mm. And then the smaller, small turbines into residential. Mm. Mm. Everready is getting. I mean, Everready is such an innovative company. I, I mean, I did the tour of this, the site to see you going from batteries and into the the micro turbines and even House of York inside there. I mean, there's a there's amazing history there of the company. That's right. I mean, Everready itself obviously has a very proud sort of 70 year history in peace. Yes. Uh, you know, well known brand name in South Africa, um, and then some very forward thinking people there. So I think. Um, you know, they've, they've developed the business into areas, as you say, that are, are quite unique, and is a, it is quite an interesting plant to visit, to go from battery, which is this conveyor belt sort of manufacturing, That's to right. woodwork and into electronics. You know, so <laughs> it is an interesting place. Um, but yeah, everything's going pretty well. You know, there's, uh, the diversification has been a, a good move, I think. So you know, all those areas are growing. Um, it's nice for for a company, you know, with such a sort of proud SA history to move into renewable energy and, and to sort of you know hope to be a big player in that sort of area. Mm. Well, let's talk about uh, how that's going because um, we know that South Africa certainly are looking to change the energy mix, but slow going still. It is. I think it is. You know, it's. I think South Africa. We you know we have to deal with quite a few challenges, so it's not a not, not a quick changeover. Um, I suppose we have a history of you know coal-fired power stations providing yeah. the vast majority, if not all, of our power. So the change that is is was always going to be a lengthy sort of process. Mm. Um, but it's going well. You know, P's, you know, shown quite a bit of an innovative thinking Good. and they've jumped ahead with quite a few things as we'll probably talk about a bit later. Yeah. Um, and in general, you know, there's a lot of hype, you know, in renewable energy in South Africa. We only have to look at the sort of feedback and the, and the questions that we get, you know, as a company, uh, you know, as to, to, to really gauge how, how much interest there is. Um, yeah. So it is slowly moving. Yeah, I, I, I can see. I've probably been asked this question more than any other question about micro and turbines, and I see an SMS coming in already asking about the noise factor. <laughs> <laughs> the noise factor, yeah. No, that is, that is always a question you could ask. Look, um, I mean, there's a few few questions. You know, firstly, the, our, our biggest turbine, which is obviously now that's a four-meter blade diameter. That's so, so that's a fairly big, big, big turbine. I wouldn't put that into a residential area. You know, <laughs> that your neighbors would be pretty upset with you. But we do a lot of those turbines at an off-grid setup. So, you know, you, you, you want to be a few hundred meters away from, from, from your neighbors and, you, and, and we put battery systems and so forth in. The, I mean, part of that certification process that I, that I mentioned earlier for the UK and the US, that, you know, a big part of that is noise levels. You know, they look at, you know, in, in, yeah. in every decibel at your noise levels, and they certify according to that. So, so, you know, you do get pushed from your certification bodies to get those noise, level, noise levels down. And then if you come down to the smaller size, the you want to see, you know, the smaller turbine that's up at the Muffin and Main Centre, you'll see as you drive past, those noise levels are acceptable. You know, those turbines, there's a few up yeah. in, in residential areas already. Uh, they're very for, quiet. For many years, so they're very quiet. And... Look, the engineers continue to work to, to get those noise levels down. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into those blade designs mm. to, to get those noise levels down. So it really is hard I, work. I always say, look, if it's windy, you'll probably hear more from the trees than you'll hear from the wind turbine. Well, that's, that's it. I mean, you, you know, our decibel levels on the biggest, even the bigger turbine, you know, it's, you, you, it's, it's at sort of, you know, ambient noise. So your, your wind and trees is making about the same noise as the turbine. Yeah. It's because you see it's there and you, you listen to it, you know, specifically. But, you know, noise levels are not high. And I, I, th- I think that the reason why many people ask it is because there, there, there are a lot of clever guys in the city who've made their own turbines, mm. you know, at some point. And so those ones that have been made, and I've got a neighbor who's got one, it's very loud. Mm. Just, but it's just because he made it himself. It's not, the, it's not the, like the latest technology. There's no thought about the aerodynamics and the decibels. He's just making it to get mm. himself off the grid. So there is this perception out there, oh, I've got someone who's got a turbine. It's not a certified one or anything like that. They've made it, mm. and it's very, very loud. 
Yeah, no, that's it. It's a the, when turbine or turbine generation is almost like a hobby engineering. You know, yes, it, it is really all over the world. You hear about guys, and you only have to search the net to find. You know, hundreds of sites almost of guys, you know, documenting how they made and, the wind turbine and, and you build know, your own and get, get and a kit and everything. So it is. It, it's an interesting. Well, that shows you. It's an interesting. It's an interesting part of engineering. So, but yeah, as you say, look, our, you know, we've got a whole team of engineers working on this all yeah. the time to get these things done because that's when you start, you know, selling them and, and, and doing what we're yeah. doing with them. Then, you know, those things become more critical than just, you know, the, the interesting side of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, what really stood out for me about doing the, um, the factory walk and to actually see these micro turbines being made was... Um, how professional the setup was and how almost rustic the blades are. I just had a different perception that they would be mm. like um, different materials, but actually it's mm. really like, very close to raw materials that have been used, really efficiently done, and I mean, it's it's almost faultless. There's no ways that these things are going to get, there's nothing going to be wrong with them. They are really mm. professional. Mm, that's it. I mean, look, wind turbines are made to, you know, when a wind turbine is in the ideal location, it's in storm winds, you know, it's, it's where that's the weather right. is, is, is as bad as it can be. So so it's kind of critical that you get that right because, you know, it's also not something you want to put up and have to look at, look after all the time and maintain, you know, maintain and yeah. keep changing stuff. Like yeah. That. Another question I always get asked. <coughs> Surely, the, if the, the wind's so fast that the blades are just going to spin off, it's, it's so fast, you know? Yeah, Even yeah. these big wind farms are going up. I mean, if you've got like an 80 kilometer wind, surely that thing's going to break. Yeah, look, with our, with our turbines, the smallest one has something called blade turbulence, so that slows the blades down, and, mm. and all the other bigger ones have got a rotor, you know, a rotor. Dampeners rotor, and stuff that's like right, that. Yeah. So it just, it just turns the blade slightly out of the wind and it keeps its maximum speed. Uh, two, two benefits. Um, firstly, you don't have to break it. So even if the winds are really, really pumping, you can still keep you know, generating electricity. And also, um, you know, it doesn't do that exactly. It doesn't overspeed and just rip itself apart. So yeah. that's, a, you know, that's a benefit. <laughs> uh, how much wind is required? A question here. How much wind speed required to get the blade going? Uh, it starts at about two to three meters per second. It starts moving and it starts generating. Oh, so that's uh, small. Yeah, it's quite small. And then, I mean, we, we generally draw weather data, you know, for a specific, because we do a lot of off-grid projects as well with the wind turbine. So we look at a GPS location and we draw historical weather data from that. And then we look at wind speeds. And you want to look at an average wind speed of sort of four, four and a half meters a second as an average over a period to, to justify putting in a wind turbine, which obviously PE is, 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 is quite, it's, quite it's a bit above very, that. Yeah. It is. We have, do have a fantastic wind here. Yeah? Mm. Um, it's interesting that these wind farms are all coming down to this region, and a lot of them are going quite inland because there's a lot of, the, I think the wind maps are showing that there's some really exciting reserves of, of wind power out there that we can be tapping into. So in saying that, we are the ideal market to start a micro turbine wind business, so well mm. done there. But secondly, then, for, then we should be tapping into it, and yet that's not quite happening. You guys are exporting far more than you're selling here. Yeah. We are, yeah. I mean, we do, we do a lot of projects locally and, and around the Eastern Cape specifically. I mean, look, uh, as you said, the wind, big, wind turbine, wind, big wind farms going up is a, is a good indication. I mean, those guys yeah. do, you know, if you get that wrong by, you know, a few, few hundred meters in terms of the location, that's, you know, vast amounts of money, you know, that they lose. So, so they study those wind maps very carefully and they, they, get it, they get it, make sure they get it 100% right. Um, <clears throat> so that's why we draw weather data as well. But there's, mm. I mean, around the Eastern Cape, we put up, in fact, all the coastal areas, we put up a lot of, a lot of off-grid wind, 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 you know, wind locations and a wind and off-grid, mm. you know, systems for lodges and farms and so forth. I think if there's no ESCOM power available, then, you know, putting up uh, an off-grid system is a no-brainer. And, um, and slowly but surely it's becoming viable to put them up, you know, even closer to home. Yeah. Well, the, the big news that's, of course, come through over the last uh, two, three weeks has been this embedded generation that's come online because before that you'd have to really use the energy that was coming forth or store it somehow. And that mm. was always then a bit of a schlep. That's right. That was the hold back, you know, sort of holding back the industry in terms of changing over where, you know, you can produce renewable energy at home. Yeah. Um, to if put you, in, yeah, sorry, if you didn't yeah. have batteries? <clears throat> well, that's, you, you'd lose it, essentially. You'd lose you know, it. I mean, firstly, you know, ESCOM and the municipalities wouldn't have been that happy with you putting energy back onto the grid because yeah. it wasn't authorized. But even if you were doing that, you know, without anybody knowing about it, you wouldn't get any credit for it. So yeah. if, uh, you know, solar panels, for example, would produce obviously between 10 and 5, you know, and there's nobody at home then. Everyone comes home at 6, 7, and they want to start cooking food and they're having a bath and a shower, and then all that energy has gone into the grid during the day, so there's no benefit for you. Um, and you, as, as you rightly said, then you would need batteries. And batteries are, you know, it's a technology that they are also, I suppose, many companies and engineers working on it, but it's still a bit of a Achilles heel to the industry. You know, it's yes. uh, they expensive. The type of batteries we use for renewable energy is expensive. They're these deep cycle batteries. Um, they're big. Uh, they need to be kept, you know, almost in a separate. You'd have to mm. build another room onto your house to do any sort of significant storage. Uh, they've got to be replaced every, you know, five to seven years, depending on which batteries you use. 
So it's a bit of a, that, that, that was always a bit of a holdback. I mean, you really need to, if you had ESCOM power available at your home and you wanted to go off-grid, you'd have to really have a serious issue with ESCOM or, or want to go green very badly. <laughs> serious tree hugger. <coughs> serious, serious tree hugger. Yeah. Okay, so coming online now is embedded generation. And essentially, as what I understand, Alex, is that it's um, you can generate power <coughs> off a micro turbine or a PV panel and the municipality will now accept it and actually record it for you and then you could take it when you want that's right i mean you almost you know to get back to the battery you're almost using the grid as your battery that's you know essentially what you're doing in a way because your your panels will produce during the day or your wind turbine obviously has the you know ability to produce any time of the day but you know whenever it's producing it's if you're not using that power on site that's going into the grid but mm. this bi-directional meter that the municipality install for you that measures what's going on to the grid so that's literally you know you can come mm. home in the evening and you've built up a credit in a sense and you're using that energy that you've put onto the grid during the day now, this surely is not happening all over the place. This, this, this must be quite unique. It is. I mean, look, it's happening all over the place in terms of globally. You know, it's happening, in, obviously, in the UK, in, in Europe, in America. This is sort of standard practice. Um, they've, we can get into it in a little bit, but they've gone a step further where they actually pay you for that, but we're not quite there yet. But they, okay. So it's not happening all over South Africa. We, the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality have been the first to authorize it, which is, wow. which is very significant. I mean, that's, you know, that's a, it shows you how sort of forward thinking and mm. how, you know, how they, you know, they've really thought about this. Um, all the municipalities can kind of, I mean, obviously there's guidance from NERSA and ESCOM in terms mm. of what they will allow and, and, and not, but within that sort of framework, the municipalities can kind of make their own decisions and they can, they can push certain things and they can, and, and so it really just boils down to the guys here that have um, implemented this, gone ahead and implemented it. Well, Peter Nielsen and them are very forward thinking um, and to yeah. head up our, on yeah. our local municipality and it's wonderful to see that this has come online. Uh, so let's take a short break. We're going to answer some more of your questions and then also deal with some of the practicalities of whether, how this actually works and, and whether it is, is working. We're talking about embedded generation. Alex Wolfmeyer from uh, Kestrel Renewable Energy joining us in studio for today's Green Hour 91. Stay tuned. We'll get to more of this conversation in just a bit. Welcome back to the Green Hour on Kingfisher FM. Well, welcome back to the show. We've got uh, Alex uh, Hofmeyer from uh, Ever Ready or from uh, Kestrel, I should say, and talking about uh, the micro wind turbines that are manufactured here in Nelson Mandela Bay. And slowly but surely, more and more local people are, are buying into it, getting involved with it. And I think with this new exciting and better generation that's come online, we're going to see a, a big change. Are you, are you expecting a, a more interest locally with, with, with this? Um, embedded generation door that's opened? Yes, no, certainly expecting a lot of interest. I mean, you know, we've got uh, a few businesses signed up already to, to start installing Fantastic. systems. And then residential, we are going out doing energy assessments at this point. You know, obviously we were at the Home Expo uh, a couple of weeks ago now. So that was kind of the type of platform we could launch this sort of thing from, you know. So, so as the word gets out there, we get more and more inquiries and we're starting to do more and more assessments. So. I find the first obstacle that's, that... Um, probably needs to be done is that many people don't know how much energy they're actually using mm. on their house so they, they don't you know just pay your bill you know you don't really monitor and if you've got a prepaid meter you're just so used to buying electricity just pulling it in and then leaving it throwing mm. the slip away um where when you talk about the embedded generation and renewable energy you know you actually have a, need to have an idea of how much energy you use you do no you do i mean look you want to no, over a 12-month period, roughly what your sort of patterns are, consumption patterns That's are, right. you know, going from winter to summer, that tends to change. I mean, it tends to stay pretty, you know, the same from year to year. It doesn't change too much annually, but, you know, over a year, over that, obviously over that, from as you go from winter to summer, that does change. Um, so we would look at that and then, I mean, it's, you know, it's not too difficult to establish what the consumption is. Most people, you know, we find that most people don't know what their consumption is, but the numbers they're spending on it monthly, yes. you know. So, so you so can you work could, it from there. You can work it from there. And, um, and then the, the nice thing about this program is that you, you can step the system, you know, you can depend on, because we have a tariff mm. system where you pay a certain amount for the first 300 units you use and, you know, it goes up a little bit for the That's next. That's right, yeah. And so forth. And as soon as you go over 950 units, you sort of get hammered. Quite yeah. badly with, with what you're paying per kilowatt hour. Yeah, and that's many people don't know this tariff. The whole tariff system is still they, in the midst of it. That's right, they don't. And and I mean, you know, because people don't don't know a lot of these things, and we do do a bit of an assessment. So you come, you know, we'll sit down and, and really design the system, look at consumption, and look at and look at the weather data, and look at what we expect a certain size system to produce in terms of units every month going through the year, and then we design the system the right size because, as you say, you don't want to. With this embedded generation, you know, we haven't gone as far as some of the European con you know, countries in America where they pay you for additional energy you put into the grid. So you're not, if you, whatever you put in over yeah. and above what you've used, you that, that, that you do lose, you know, you, yeah. so you've got to size it right. Yeah, so let's, let's just clarify and so we totally understand how the system would work, mm -hmm. this embedded generation. 
you guys would come, we'd install a wind turbine based on the demand that we would have at our home. So if I'm only using a certain amount, you won't go and install something that's larger than that. You'd sort of focus on what I really need. And then um, this turbine would be generating electricity. Let's say I go, even go away for a weekend. It would be generating electricity while the wind's blowing. I come back and there'd be a meter telling me how much I'm in the plus. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. So we look at... We'll, you know, visit and then do a design and decide in terms of solar PV panels and wind, you know, what is the best combination or, or, or either, you know, depending on, on, on what this, that specific situation requires. And then, yeah, we size it to your consumption. So if you, as you rightly say, if you're not there, it produces the bi-directional meter that the municipality installs. We can go through the process of the, you know, mm -hmm. how you go through and get this done. But that little meter measures what's going in. And then, as you say, you come home, you know, you'll be in credit and then you'll literally use those credits up again as you, you know, as you go. Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does indeed. Yeah, and and I think it'll be interesting, you know, just to be able to put something at your house that's actually, amazing. you know, that's producing something. You know, you're not spending money on, on your property or on your house and just you know piling money into it all the time. This thing is you're putting it in, money mm. in, but it's actually paying you back for it. You know. And now what you what you actually find is that um, properties are being sold with information about what renewable energy is available, mm. solar geysers or heat pumps. You know, that's now yeah. becoming part of the property um, newspapers. You'll see. You know, house, four bedrooms, two solar panels. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's because uh, it's an asset. It's actually going to be interesting to see how this affects property price because you are then selling a house. Not only you see, I mean, the, firstly, the, the depreciation on these things are very little. You know, they, you know, after, after that payback period, you know, you own that that equipment, and the depreciation is not like it is in a vehicle or something. It's it's much much less. So. You're selling something with that equipment value in it, and then also you're selling in a house that's got no electricity bill. You know, so that obviously has to be factored into the selling price of a house. So, because it's new for the country, um, not just for the bay, it's new for the country. We're not we're not sure exactly how that's going to impact the value of houses that are being sold, but it certainly will have some impact. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, let's go through the process. I'm interested now. Um, uh, first thing is make sure you get all your bills together. That'll that'll be make mm. things go a little bit quicker. Yeah. Then we contact you or. Where do we go? Yeah, that's that's probably the best thing to do. I mean, you can contact us right away, you know, before doing anything. You can always, it depends on whether, you know, we can take it far right from scratch, you know, with the assessment, or you can get those sorts of things together as much as you can in terms of usage, and then give us a call, um, and then somebody will come out and see you. We can, have, you know, have a look at exactly what your consumption is, and we design a system for you. And then, you know, from there, you can look at what you want to do, you know, firstly, which will be based on, on various things, you know, whether it's uh, the capital that you want to spend or whether it's yes, the space sure. that you have available at your house so there's various factors you know that you have to compare to your consumption in terms of a system because you want to everyone would love to zero their bill but it, you know it might not be feasible for somebody that's you know using 3,000 kilowatt hours a month you know have a 5,000 mm -hmm. electricity bill to zero that is a big system you know so it's certainly that's allowed right. but you know you need the space to put the PV panels up or the wind turbine up and you need to have that money yeah. available to spend you know or, so so that might not be feasible so we look at We'll scale it then from there. You know, you might find that, you know, there's various options. You know, firstly, zeroing your bill is one option, certainly. So they will look at the size that, that you need. And then if you can't do that, if that's not feasible, then you can maybe bring your consumption down to below 950 kilowatt hour units. So you're never going into the expensive energy. Yes. Whereas using units at 104, 120, you know, a kilowatt hour, you're never going into the really expensive sort of part of it. And as its prices go up, tariffs go up every year. I think the biggest impact will be in those higher consumption sort of tariff areas, you know, where you're over 950 units and you're using a lot of energy and then they'll really, you know, they'll, that's where you'll pay a lot. So you might want to do that, bring it down to below 950. And then, you know, you can even take it as far as, you know, you said just now, you know, heat pumps and solar geysers. You know, this what this program does, um, it, in a sense, it actually, you know, you could, you could put in panels just to run your geyser. You know, you could actually put up solar panels and a little inverter just to generate enough electricity to run your geyser instead of yeah, taking out your existing geyser and putting in a solar geyser. So, you know, so there's, uh, point being, there's various sort of size, system sizes that we can look at, you know, depending on, on the various factors. Yeah. Uh, and just to give an example, I mean, I've done a little calculation for my own home, and of, and of course I'm very aware of energy saving, so I'm probably uh, maybe an exception in that my, my bills are very low. But for, for me and my household to have a micro turbine, <laughs> Uh, installed in my home. I've worked out it'll take me just over three and a half years to pay it off. Um, but around about 24,000 rand outlay and um, and then I will have free energy after that, mm. which will easily meet my demand. Yeah. No, well, that's, look, w with renewable energy, I think that's the first the first thing worth mentioning is you want to you want to look at your consumption first. You know, to take a, a house that's using enormous amounts of power um, and then put in renewable energy to, to sort of, you know, compensate for that is, is always going to be difficult because it's going to make 
yes, you're going to have to put in a much more expensive system and you need a lot more space to do that. So the first step almost would be to look at your consumption, as you've done. Maybe not to the same level that you've done that. Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. just bring I'm it a down bit a extreme. Bit. Yeah, <laughs> you might get yeah, between that and, mas- and massive consumers, you'll get a, a midway there, you know, yeah. to, to look at consumption and bring that down a little bit. So you don't have so that the renewable energy system you put in doesn't have to be as big as it would have to be. Yeah. Jonathan's just messaging here asking about is financing available at all? I don't think so at the moment. It is. No, we actually oh, yeah. finance. Yeah, we, have, okay. we, we do the financing as well. So you don't have to necessarily have the capital available to do it. You can finance the system um, over over 60 months like you do with a car. The exciting thing is, you know, where, you know, you're used to buying a car with finance. You know, and at the yeah. end of that 60-month period, you own something. That's what you've done. You've bought something that's depreciated enormously over the six month, over that six-year period. And um, and you just own it. Whereas with this thing, you know, you're paying it over over six years, sixty months, same sort of thing. And then you own something that it's actually paid itself back over that period. So not yeah, just you know, it's actually you know you've made money back on the thing, and it's still you know depreciation as we said is much less. So you still it's still worth eighty percent of what it was, and it still carries on producing energy for the next twenty five years. So you you're actually doing two businesses that have signed up. Are those with PV panels, micro turbines? Both, Both. combination. Yeah. Combination. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to what we see out at Moffat and Main. I yes, see exactly. two panels there with a turbine. That's right. That's a neat little sort of, you know, d- display unit to show you sort of what, you know, the, the, t- the two that you would use. Um, that, that little system probably produces about 200 kilowatt hours a month, maybe a little bit less, but that's uh, that's roughly what we would do. Yeah, we would assess and see if, the, you know, as we said, if there's, you know, you need north-facing roof space ideally for solar panels. So, you know, if that's not really available, then wind might be a better option. With wind again, if there's trees and there's other issues yeah. or, you know, then, then that might be viable. So we look at each individual sort of location to make a decision. Okay. Mm. Okay, so f- financing available, and that's, that's through right. you guys. The that's smart, us, yeah. the smart meter though, that's done separately through the municipality. Yeah. Also through you? No, well, that's the municipality themselves. So what you would do is, we would get in touch, you know, do the assessment, you know, do a, f- a whole sort of neg- you know, negotiation and an assessment, f- you know, for free, and then give you a proposal. Um, once we, once you're happy with that, then that system gets installed. Once the system is installed, then the municipality come and they put in a what's called a bi-directional four quadrant meter that does this measuring, and they they do that, and they. The municipality of us go a step further. They that meter and the installation would normally be about two thousand eight hundred rand, and they subsidise half of that. So you pay one four wow. for this installation, <laughs> you know, everything done, and and quite neat as well that that system includes a modem, so that sends your consumption data through to them, and you can go onto their website and you can monitor what yeah. you've produced, what you've used. You know, it's it's really taking charge of your ener- you know, energy consumption future. Yeah, they're being really nice to us. They, they are. They are. They are. They're really going out of their way. Yeah. I think, as you know, Peter Nielsen at the municipality really is a, you know, he's, he's quite passionate about this. You mm. know, he, he, I think they've, as a, as a department, they've done a lot of work and they're quite excited about it themselves. I mean, if you think about it, it's the first municipality, not in South Africa, but in Africa doing this. You yeah, know, I don't think there's any, right. you know, I speak under correction there, but I don't think there's anywhere in Africa that's allowing this as yet. So it's, it really is significant. Yeah. That is fantastic. Okay, so the you guys will do the consultation. We'll evaluate what we what is required. You'll put through the proposal. We'll need the, the smart meter to be added on as well through the municipality. And would there be any maintenance? I mean, who would manage this whole thing? Is it done through the municipality? Yeah, the the, the meter itself would be. I mean, we we'll take you through that whole thing anyway. We'll you know we'll you know guide you and help you with the municipality. We're obviously in close contact with with the, with the municipal guys to help with that. Uh, they'll maintain the system. You know, I'm, you know, on the on the meter metering side. Um, as for the the, the, so the, the, energy, the renewable energy system will do that. You know, we'll, over the period, we'll maintain that. Uh, we'll make sure that it runs Fantastic. You know, while it's financed and, and going forward. I mean, your, your, your sort of maintenance on these systems is, is minimal. You know, on a, mm-hmm. on a solar mm-hmm. system, it's, it's hardly anything. And then in, on a wind turbine, there's no maintenance whatsoever. You know, you might have bearings after 10 years or so, but there's one is very little maintenance with yeah. this sort of system. Yeah, well, interesting, Mark is asking about what's the guarantee on the turbine. Well, it's five years, you know, if, if it's financed, it will extend that get that guarantee. But as I say, there's very little that can go wrong. Not, not to say that nothing ever goes wrong, but there's very little that yeah. really does go wrong with wind turbines. Yeah. So, as we said earlier, we alluded to the fact that I mean, these are manufactured to be up in, in the harshest you know, weather conditions. That's yeah. what they sort of made for. And, and we certainly don't have it. Yeah. You know, some of the turbines we export to, you know, spaces like southern Chile where there's, you know, winds that, you know, are frightening. So... The P might be the windy city, but it's not. You know, they are worse places. Yeah, I think Cape Town is one of those. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a stand at four meter blades. That, that's fairly significant. But, but diameter, so that each blade is two meters, and you get a four yeah, meter diameter. But that's a, that's that's uh, big. That's, that's a big machine. But that's yeah. certainly not what we're looking at. P. You're talking more about a. Well, how big is the blade? A uh, 1.6 meter blade diameter. Okay, so, so yeah, no, they're off pretty yeah. big. The smallest one we do is the one outside of Moffat and Mates. So you yes. see, that's 1.6. Blade uh, diameter. Okay, 1.6. Yeah. That is still quite big. Yeah. Now you look with wind. Um, 
you know, the bigger you go, the more efficient they get. That's mm. that's the, the the truth of it. You know, if you look at these big turbines that are going up here, they think their blades are sort of 32 meters, I think, each. Yeah, well, the, uh, we, last week, the JBA guys told us that the blades are a staggering 58 meters. There you go. And and, and the off <laughs> the offshore turbines, you know, you, they put these off in the North Sea. And, oh, uh, and man. Those blade, blades are now at 75 meters. So that's a 150 <laughs> meter blade diameter. I mean, talk about <laughs> astounding. I don't think my neighbours will be happy with no, that. Feet, no, I think you'll, you'll have problems. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alex, this is really exciting to see what happens. Um, we tend to be, a, uh, I think there's a bit of irony in all of this. We tend to be a, a, quite a, a slowish city uh, getting going with stuff like this, and yet we are the ones leading the way here. So let's hope that many residents, and I think small businesses get online. It seems like mm. for small business um, that perhaps have a bit of capital, this is a significant investment into yes. what you, where you want to go forward. And, and for homeowners, I think cause there's obviously a very there's a great opportunity as well. Okay, so what do I do? Give you guys a call. Where, where should I make contact? Yeah, we 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 based as you said at Everready. So we're in that in that same building. We manufacture the turbines there, and all our solar stuff is there. Uh, so you can call us on 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 oh four one four oh one two five double zero or visit our, visit our website. Uh, we've got the examples of all the you know the systems we've done, and you know it's quite a quite a sort of um, interesting website. www.kestrelwind.co.za and um, examples yeah. there as well. Yeah, okay. all of that. And then obviously through there you can get in contact with us. And then you know, the benefit of this is that it's it's a PE based or a Nelson Mandela Bay based based yeah. program. So we when we're here, so it's quite easy to visit and, and come out. There's no delay, you know, in that. There's no distance. Yeah, fantastic. Phew. I'm really excited. I think it's fantastic that this has finally come online. I, I, I find that you know, with my vehicle, I, I keep talking about it that I've moved away from diesel. I use biodiesel now and. And slowly, I mean, we're doing it for like six months now. Slowly, people will start, you know, the skepticism of mm. free energy or cheaper energy. We're not, we're not used to it. We become so uh, nervous of it. Where this is really a genuine offer that's available. I mean, it is happening. We've it got is. people signed up. So you need to get on board. You need people need to catch a wake up as quick as possible and don't miss out on this. It's certainly going to be around for a while, but. Take the lead, do it. Exactly. No, I mean, it really is the opportunity to get on and start doing it now. It's not just, you know, as we said earlier, you know, up until now, green energy has been this sort of, you know, nice idea, but too expensive. Now it's, you know, you have this combination of a financially viable thing. You're looking, you know, financially at your, after yourself and also doing, you know, doing something that is good for the environment. So yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a really good opportunity. It's interesting. I'm getting a lot of interest from around the country saying, can you tell us more about it? So I think there's, there's exciting days ahead. So yeah. And then they are working on it. I mean, I know, you know Cape Town are doing pilot projects. KZN, I think, are allowing it to some extent. And Bloemfontein is also talk of a few systems. So, Fantastic. So people are coming on board, but PE's jumped ahead. Yeah, and we've got local manufacturers right here. What more right. could you want? Yeah. Alex, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yes. Um, and, and we're going we're gonna to need to bounce more questions off you, no doubt, that are coming through. Great, thanks. All right, thanks so much. All right, so there we go. Don't forget to go along to our website. You can listen to this interview there as well as uh, all the past 90 episodes here on the show. Go listen to some of these wind farms that are going up. How big they are. You also get some of the traffic updates, by the way, um, as to what's been what's happening in this region. We're going to be busy like this for at least the next uh, two years as all of this takes place. But you can be uh, tapping into this exciting opportunity right here in the Bay. Go to kestrelwind.co.za and chat with Alex. And uh, hey, you could be one of the first in your area to be getting free energy. Huh? Okay, remember, if not now, when? If not us, who? That's really the theme of uh, the Green Hour, and you can catch the national conversation on energy efficiency next Wednesday here on uh, 103.8 and 107.5.